Good morning. My name is Ann Wright. I'm a retired U.S. Army colonel with 29 years in the U.S. military. And I was also a U.S. diplomat for 16 years and served in U.S. embassies in Nicaragua, Grenada, Somalia, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Sierra Leone, Micronesia, Afghanistan, and Mongolia. In March of 2003, I ended up resigning from the U.S. government over President Bush's war on Iraq. And I also, in my letter of resignation, mentioned the unnecessary curtailment of civil liberties under the Patriot Act, which I think has a lot to do with what we're speaking about today with Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. The crackdown in 2003 on journalists who opposed the war on Iraq was a forecast of things to come as mainstream media refused to challenge the Bush administration and the Blair administrations on their rationale for the war and the legal basis for that war. The few journalists who dared to confront Bush and Blair were fired, including veteran New York Times journalist Chris Hedges. An alternate press was definitely needed, and three years later in 2006, Julian Assange and friends launched WikiLeaks to give the world the behind-the-scenes history of our government's decision-making, the good, the bad, and the ugly. After I resigned from the U.S. government, I joined the U.S. peace movement, including Veterans for Peace, Code Pink Women for Peace, and many other groups challenging U.S. imperialism. As a retired U.S. Army colonel, I became an organizer and a speaker for another veteran, Chelsea Manning. The lives of Julian Assange and Chelsea Manning have been intertwined in their efforts to provide information to the public about the lies, corruption, and criminal acts in the wars of the United States. As you remember, Chelsea was prosecuted for providing U.S. military and diplomatic documents to Julian and WikiLeaks about the wars on the peoples of Afghanistan and Iraq. In April 2010, WikiLeaks published the U.S. Army's video that Chelsea provided that graphically demonstrated three U.S. Army helicopter airstrikes in Baghdad that killed 18 persons, including the July 12, 2007, murder of two journalists, Syed Shmanda and Namir Norban, who were a film team that worked for Reuters. The video became known as Collateral Murder. In July of 2010, WikiLeaks published 75,000 of 91,000 U.S. military documents called the Afghanistan Warlords. In October of 2010, WikiLeaks published 280,000 Army reports that became known as the Iraq Warlords, War Logs. And in November 2010, WikiLeaks published 2,250,000 U.S. diplomatic cables known as Cablegate. In midst of WikiLeaks' 2010 publication of these documents, Chelsea Manning was arrested, imprisoned, and in July 2013 was convicted by U.S. military courts of violations of the Espionage Act and other offenses for providing documents to WikiLeaks for seven years from May 27, 2010 until January 17, 2017, when President Obama commuted her 35-year sentence, Chelsea had been in jail. In June 2012, two years after Chelsea was put in pretrial confinement in military prison and prior to her July 2013 court-martial, Julian Assange took refuge in the Embassy of Ecuador in London and was granted asylum by the government of Ecuador due to legitimate fears of political persecution of his journalism and of extradition to the United States. While Julian was in the Embassy of Ecuador, concerned citizens around the world held vigils for him and for Chelsea. I was a part of two delegations that visited Julian while he was in the Ecuadorian embassy. Our groups called Veterans Intelligence Professionals for Sanity and the Sam Adams Whistleblowers had several dinners long into the evening with Julian as we discussed the state of journalism and the state of the world. Our group had former and retired U.S. and U.K. government officials who have been whistleblowers on misconduct of the U.S. and U.K. governments in war and in governmental spying on private communications of their citizens as well as citizens and governments around the world. 
In January 2018, Julian was granted Ecuadorian citizenship, but it was suspended in 2019 by a new Ecuadorian government under pressure from the United States and the UK. One year ago, on April 11, 2019, Julian had been in the Embassy of Ecuador for almost seven years when his request for asylum was canceled by the new Ecuadorian government. Ecuadorian officials allowed London police to enter the embassy and arrest Julian. Later in the day, on April 11, 2019, Julian was found guilty of breaching the Bail Act and on May 1, 2019, was sentenced to 50 weeks in Belmash Prison outside of London, where he remains. On the same day, the United States government unsealed an indictment against Julian for alleged computer intrusion related for the leaks provided by Chelsea Manning. On May 23, 2019, the U.S. government further charged Julian with violating the U.S. Espionage Act of 1917. Meanwhile, back in the United States in March of 2019, we began vigils for Chelsea as she was called to testify before a grand jury in Virginia. She told the grand jury that she would not verbally testify about her involvement with Julian and WikiLeaks. She brought to the grand jury the official documents from her court martial and told members of the prosecution and the grand jury that they could read the documents, but she would not testify. In late March 2019, for refusing to verbally testify, Chelsea was sent to an Alexandria, Virginia detention center for 63 days and then remanded again to the detention center in May 2019 for the remainder of the year and until March 12, 2020 for refusing to testify before the two secret federal grand juries. Chelsea was released by order of a federal judge on March 12th after a suicide attempt on March 11, 2020, and long after the grand jury had been released. She was fined $1,000 per day for each day she refused to testify. Supporters raised, uh, raised $256,000 to pay her fines after she was finally released on March 12th, 2020. In the meantime, Julian has remained under inhumane conditions in the Belmash prison, and the inhumanity continues into the courtroom. His infrequent hearings have been difficult to follow. Ambassador Craig Murray has provided the most detailed description of the hearings and of the atrocious conditions that Julian as a defendant has had to endure. I, like so many around the world, have been a supporter of journalist Julian Assange since he began WikiLeaks. During his lengthy stay in the Ecuadorian embassy, of course, we visited Julian, as I mentioned before. And here are some photographs, and I think you have some in. This is part of our group with Julian. And another picture. We have them in color on the slides. <laughs> Okay. Several of us from the U.S. have also attended the weekly demonstrations for Julian at the Home Office in London. I was there in December of 2019 with a group. Many journalists and human rights organizations have strongly denounced the U.K. and U.S. vindictive legal actions against Julian. The Committee to Protect Journalists has said, we would be concerned by a prosecution that construes publishing government documents as a crime. This would set a dangerous precedent that would harm all journalists, whether inside or outside the United States. The American Civil Liberties Union has said any prosecution of Mr. Assange for WikiLeaks publishing operations would be unprecedented and unconstitutional and would open the door to criminal investigations of other news organizations. Moreover, prosecuting a foreign publisher for violating U.S. secrecy laws would set an especially dangerous precedent for U.S. journalists who routinely violate government foreign secrecy laws to deliver information vital to the public's interest. Human Rights Watch has said, it's strictly troubling if the, administ the Trump administration, which has shown little regard for media freedom, would charge Assange for receiving from a government official and publishing 
classified information, exactly what journalists do all the time. And M Amnesty International has said, authorities in the U.S. must drop the espionage and all other charges against Julian Assange that relate to his publishing activities as a part of his work with WikiLeaks. The U.S. government's unrelenting pursuit of Julian Assange for having published disclosed documents that include possible war crimes committed by the U.S. military is nothing short of a full-scale assault on the right to freedom of expression. Moreover, more than 160 medical authorities in, in November of 2019 wrote to the British government stating Julian urgently needs medical treatment at a university hospital for treatment of psychological problems including depression as well as dental issues and a serious shoulder ailment. At this time, Julian is in danger of the COVID-19 virus while he's still incarcerated in Belmarsh Prison. He has not been convicted of any offense, he, he is, but he is being detained in a maximum security facility at the behest of the U.S. government. He is a political prisoner incarcerated solely to facilitate hearings for his extradition to the United States where he faces Espionage Act charges and life imprisonment for publishing evidence of war crimes. And I'd like to go on to one other issue that you all are discussing in your very important conference. As a last item, here in Hawaii and the Pacific, a huge naval military war exercise with 25,000 military personnel from over 20 countries having 200 ships, submarines, and aircraft are scheduled for a six-week exercise during the COVID-19 as scheduled in the waters around Hawaii. We would like for your support for the cancellation of this exercise. Please consider signing our petition, Cancel RIMPAC, and I'll show you a picture of that right now. Let's see. As we go on to another computer, let's see where we have that, there it is. Okay, we would like for you to consider, ta -da, right here, stop the largest naval exercise in the world, and right now we have almost 8,000 signatures. So as a final thing, I thank you all very much for having your conference. I'm honored to be a part of it, and let's get peace in our world, stop all the militarism around the world. Thank you.